This idea of the anaphylaxis, right? A lot of us are scared of that. We have this concept that, oh, I heard that there was anaphylaxis, two cases in Alaska, right? So no medical professional, no vaccine expert was surprised that people are having anaphylactic reactions to this vaccine. I've never had an anaphylaxis ever, but I did have a severe allergic rash that just happened to one of my patients who took Shingrix ever. You know, I've given 10,000 doses, you know? So it's odd. It's goofy that in Alaska, two folks that knew each other got anaphylaxis or that were like kind of close to each other, right? That was weird. But again, we're scrutinizing and how many anaphylaxis reactions happen with shingles. So we have this concern, right, about the anaphylaxis as the big kind of scary thing, but it's, it's not scary or surprising. And again, most of us are going to be getting this at a doctor's office. We're going to be getting it at a medical clinic with medical professionals everywhere and all of the, the, the uh, support that we would need. And here's what we think is going on that's causing some of the local stuff that maybe the pain in my arm and potentially the anaphylaxis too. Our current best guess is that the fats that are used to kind of like, it's kind of like an M&M, you know, my M&M analogies, it wraps and coats the M&M, these fats, uh, <laughs> it coats the mRNA, uh, the, the actual component of the, the vaccine. And then there's little uh, polyethylene glycol molecules that are attached to them. Right. So it's like a fat shell and it's got a little polyethylene glycol. Now, polyethylene glycol, it's in everything. It's in cosmetics, it's in foods, it's in medicines, it's in supplements. Uh, it's everywhere. And it's been known to cause some local reactions. And that's probably what's kind of bugging me right now. Um, this lipid polyethylene glycol anaphylaxis is almost definitely not going to be a problem for you if you've never had anaphylaxis before. Okay. But if, if you do, you're going to be at that doctor's office. You're going to be at that medical clinic when you're getting this. So you, you, you should still get the vaccine. There's no other uh, way around this. Um, there's no vaccine that won't have this risk. It's, it's just important that, you know, you should still get vaccinated. There's no good reason to not get vaccinated, right? So the vaccine's still recommended for anybody. So Getting here to the, like, you know, what's in the vaccines question, uh, because like, oh man, you're talking about polyethylene glycol. That sounds like a very harmful chemical, right? And the next question then ends up, well, what else is in there that could potentially hurt me? So the, the quick non-nerdy answer here is the mRNA, right? The fats, the salts, the sugar, and water. That's literally what's in there. That's what those components are. But the more nerdy answer with the chemical names for these things is here. And again, don't stress if you can't see it. I've, I've got this on our site already, and it's going to be a part of like what you'll get your hands on. But again, it's mRNA. It's these fats and cholesterol that coat and protect with some polyethylene glycol attached to it. And then there's the saline solution to stabilize the compound, right? There's no preservatives uh, beyond the stuff that's there to help the pH work. One of the things that I like to say here is that there are no hidden or unlabeled ingredients because that's misinformation that circulates. So whatever's in that list is it. There's nothing else that's in here that could potentially hurt you. Those ingredients look scary, but they are incredibly benign. Okay. And despite the local reactions and the questions around the polyethylene glycol, which, you know, to be honest with you, when I see this and I, I see like everybody looking at this problem, I'm like, great. That means we're going to have a better understanding about polyethylene glycol and how we can use it and, and, you know, what's the real risk in the future. None of the ingredients of the vaccine are going to cause short-term or long-term harm. The adverse events that we are going to experience, minus, of course, the injection site stuff, aren't from the injection. The adverse events that we're experiencing are from our immune system working, all right? So we are not reacting to the components. We are reacting to the thing, the vaccine itself. Our immune system is going, we need to work.